Hey everybody, today's instructional video is to show you how to cone and thread quarter inch high pressure tubing. Uh, if you look at the table right now, I've got my threading tool, which has a quarter 28 left hand die, and I've got my quarter inch high pressure coning tool. Uh, these tools are sold in all different sizes, in medium pressure and high pressure, right here at HIP. Uh, the other thing we need is some lubricant uh, to put on the cutting blades and also on the die when we go to do the threading and coning process. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our coning tool body and take a piece of tubing. And the one thing we want to make sure of is that it's you know, cut off relatively square on the end and there's no burrs on the OD of it. So we thread this in here. We take our cutting tool and we put this in here about maybe two or three threads, two or three full turns until it just touches the tube, okay? So then I back it off and remove this, continuing to hold this tubing in place so it doesn't you know, go farther up to the cutting blades. We put this in our vise and we tighten the collet nut. Now you don't have to put a lot of torque on this collet nut because it'll squeeze on that tubing pretty good. So I like to do it hand tight and then just a slight snug like that, okay? So our next process now is to, st to stand the coning tool body straight up, or even on a little bit of an angle. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of lubrication on the blades of the coning tool before we put it inside the tool itself. The one thing you want to remember when you're coning and threading, especially in the coning process, is you want to do a continuous motion with the cutting tool. You never want to stop in midstream, and you don't want to push down the feed nut too fast, or it's going to put a very, very bad finish on the end of the cone for you. So just a little bit of lubrication on the end of the blades. We put this down inside the coning tool body until it just barely touches the tubing, then we back it off slightly. So now our next step is going to be to start to rotate the handle. And you can start to feel the cutting blades hitting the end of the tubing. And again, as you can notice, I'm not stopping the blades at all. I'm continually rotating it as I'm turning the feed nut clockwise. Okay? And what you're doing now is you're putting force on the end of the cutting blades into the end of the tubing and you're actually making the actual cone itself. So let's continue to do this for a little bit. And you'll know you're done when all of a sudden the blades will kind of like break free, which means that you've actually coned the tubing to the exact length that you want it. Now there's a step in the uh, catalog that actually shows how many rotations of the feed nut it takes. Um, I've been doing this for so long, I just do it by hand. And I can actually tell when the cutting blades have actually bottomed out or actually faced off the end of the tubing. And that should do it right there. So now I back off my feed nut and remove my blades and set that aside. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to thread the tubing. And I like to use the coning tool body to hold the tubing in place when I'm doing the threading process. So what I do is take my wrench, loosen up the collet nut a little bit, and sometimes the tubing won't come out so you just give a little tap with the hammer and now the tubing will come out of the body of the coning tool. So we put this forward so it sticks out approximately three or four inches from the end of the coning tool body. And we put this back in the vise and we snug this up again, ever so slightly, we don't even put a lot of torque on it. And again, we put this in the vise a little bit at an angle and tighten our vise. Now we're going to do the threading process. Now the threading process requires you to push down on the die as you're doing your first rotation. Now remember, this is a left-handed thread. It's not the standard rotation where you go clockwise. You have to go counterclockwise. So we put a little bit of lubrication on the end of the tubing. We put our coning tool, or excuse me, our threading tool on there. And as you can see at the end of the threading tool, there's a guide bushing that's the same size as the tubing that you're actually going to thread. So that goes over there until it just touches the end of the cone. And now I'm going to push down on this and I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise until I start to feel that first thread cut. Once I start to feel a cut, I continue to put motion that way against the tubing until we get our first one or two threads cut in there. And now what we can do is just rotate this. And I believe in the catalog it's about 11 full turns. My rule of thumb is when I'm doing quarter inch high pressure tubing, is when the cone actually pops up through the end of the die, which is right about there, and that tells me I have enough threads on the tube itself. So what I do is I break the, the chips away from the thread to make sure that when I rotate this out that no chips are between the die and the tubing or else it will actually roll the thread or actually 
you know, uh, recut it. So we want to rotate this clockwise to remove it. And once it's completely off, just pull it right off the tube itself. So now we've got our cone and thread on our tubing. And the next step is when you're all done and you want to put this in your mating part, is you have your gland and collar. So the gland would slide on here, and the collar again is a left handed thread. And the rule of thumb is you thread the collar on until there's about one and a half to two threads from the end of the collar to the cone. And once that's completed, you can put this in the, uh, in the valve or elbow to your cross and you're ready to go into service.